Another question? Way in the back. The House of Games? Yes. Oh, boy, I don't know. I, 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 it's hard for me to pull out one moment that I... Uh, um, Clearly your ad lib is one of them, right? But yeah, <laughs> yes, well, that's the one, oh, that's when I take the lunch, is that the one line of what word I have it. I do remember one thing which was kind of interesting. Any, all of you who are, you know, either our actors or directors or people in the film business will appreciate this. We shot that whole film in Seattle. You know, it, it, it's hard to really tell where we were, and that was the whole point. David never wanted to, uh, in fact, I remember the Seattle Film Commission early on came to us, and they were, they were leaning on the producer saying, you know, we really want, you know, it'd be great to show the needle in there somewhere. You know, they really wanted people to know that it was Seattle, and David was adamant that it was House of the Games that was part of the deal, that you shouldn't know where they were. So what he did is they, they, they made this little model. <laughs> they shot this little thing with these little toy trains, and they built a little fake needle, and they shot a little, like two feet, like about five seconds of this little train going by with the needle. Of course, they never used it in the film. But they showed it to the film commission and said, hey, what do you think of this, you know? And I was like, uh, but, but one moment I do remember was that near the, um, we were shooting, it was near the end of the film, one of our last days, and it was a very cold, it was starting to, we shot most of it in the late summer in Seattle, but now it was fall was coming and it was starting to get rainy and cold at night. And it was a night shoot. It probably was that night when it was raining. We saw the rain in the bar, or they created the rain. And I remember that uh, Lindsay had to wear just, uh, you know, she was a very light kind of thing she was wearing. And all the crew was in parkas and hats and earmuffs and gloves. And everybody was kind of, you know, taking their time and everybody was having a good time. And, and I could see Lindsay was just turning blue from the cold. Finally, the first AD, Ned Dowd, who was an ex-hockey player, 40, big guy, you know. He, he, he stops the production, he goes, stop, stop, everybody. All right, God, everyone, everybody in the crew, take off your clothes down to your T-shirts. Everybody. And, they, and of course, everybody had to do it, because this guy, he just never said no to this guy. So now the whole crew is in T-shirts, and you know, and at the rain and the cold, he goes, now we'll shoot the scene. Now let's see how quickly we get this shot. I was like, I got it in like, you know, two, two minutes or something. So I mean, I just thought that was a little, you know, I had nothing to do with the movie, but it was just kind of an interesting kind of moment that I won't, won't forget. I thought it was very uh, cavalier of him to do that for her. Reminds me of another crazy story that's slightly off, but, but uh, seems to work, which is uh, some, some months after the movie came out, uh, I got a note from a friend of mine who was a cop in Denver and he sent a clipping from a Denver newspaper. And it said that a man had been arrested in Denver uh, taking, uh, going into various stores uh, with a $20 bill. <laughs> <laughs> giving it to a woman behind the cab. <laughs> exactly the scene that, that we had seen in this. And then at the end it said, you know, he, he learned this from the film House of Games. And I remember writing David a note, sending it with the article, and saying to him, I've finally done something practical in my life. <laughs> have you, uh, what, what have you learned in your you know, career and the way you approach your craft now that influences how you work? Do, you do your work differently? Is there anything specific? Well, I think Mamet totally did teach me a lot in terms of, um, one thing he stressed, and he, and he was actually absolutely correct in it, is that the strength in stillness and the strength in brev brevity. In other words, as a young actor, you always think that, mm, if, I could be, if I could move faster and be louder than everybody else on stage, I'll be, I'll be best, you know. I'll be, I'll be like real powerful. So, you, you, you know, your tendency is to sometimes have unmotivated movement and just, you know, freak out and do all that. But he was always, Thing of like you know, take it down, just be still, hold your ground, take you know, take your space. And then later, later on, when I did more you know reading about different actors. I read James Cagney's autobiography, and Cagney said, you know, his 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 one code for actors was to you know, plant your feet, look the other actor in the eye, and tell the truth. You know, and that's really kind of what it's about. And you know, of course, you have to. Have, it helps when you have you know brilliant words to say, and good script. You know, but but. He did stress that, and I'd like to think that I did carry over some of that in, in what I do. 
and that in time of doubt, if you find yourself really kind of, not that there are moments when you really go for it, and you, and, you know, and it helps sometimes, to, you, you, but plan that stuff out, those explosions, those moments when you maybe lose control, but that sometimes you get much greater strength. Like the guy, the guy you, don't, you don't need to necessarily be afraid of the, like the big guy, the, the bully who's running around screaming, saying, I can kill you, you know, I'm, you know, I'm the most dangerous guy in the world. The guy you gotta worry about is the little guy who's not saying a word, who's sitting in the corner just going, <laughs> nodding his head. You know, that, it's that same kind of logic. And, he, and David was always very, he's old school that way, I guess. Ricky, how about you? Is there no, I, 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 very much the same thing, too. The idea of trusting the word. And, uh, <laughs> nobody better. Uh, uh, nobody has better words to trust. It, it's uh, an amazingly fortunate experience to get to be in things that are that well written. Not hard to trust them at all. How about two more questions? You sir in the middle. Um, for Joe, are any films coming out for you? Are you on criminal minds? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little harder for me, you know. But it was a choice I made, and, I, and the reason I made it is, as I got older, my children got older, and all that. I really, the lifestyle of being a movie actor is difficult, especially nowadays. It's not like the old days, like we had the studio system and you had a little bungalow and Warner Brothers or MGM, and went home every night. I mean, I've literally shot movies all over the world, and it's great. I don't regret any of it. But I, I really love the lifestyle I have now, where I'm home about ten months out of the year, and and and, and uh, I know where I'm going every night. But during that hiatus time I have, I do do other things. I've got a couple movies I've done. That'll be out, I don't know when, because I tend to do these kind of offbeat kind of things. I did one called uh, The Bronx Bull, which, uh, you know, Warner Brothers would sue me if I said it's the sequel to Raging Bull, because they, they don't want us to say that. And it's not, it really isn't the sequel, but yet it's based on Jake LaMotta's other book. So what it does is, it, well, it's not Robert De Niro this time, it's William Forsythe. He plays, uh, covers the period of Jake LaMotta, the boxer, as kids. So there's my character, who's his best friend. They have these two actors play us as kids, Forsythe and I. And you see Jake LaMotta as, as, you know, as a teenager. Then it jumps to him after being a boxer. And that's Forsythe and I playing these two guys, you know, after this guy's been a boxer and he's now he's a, trying to be an entertainer. It's just, it's really, I think it's a really interesting movie. I really like the script and I, and I love the role I got to play. I had a really good time with it. So that, I've got that coming out, and then I did a film with uh, Heather Graham uh, called Compulsion. That's a, like a thriller mystery that I got to work with the, um, uh, God, it's a great cinematographer. Ken Nox, basically, his name is Hungarian. Fantastic. Vilmos? Vilmos. Vilmos Zygmunt. Vilmos Zygmunt. And uh, so I, I, I really, I feel blessed. I'm really in a good place where I, I'm able to do a, a TV series that I'm actually very proud of. I think Criminal Minds is we're in our eighth season with it, and I think it's it's a little bit more of a thinking person's drama. I think. I mean, I, I, you know, I'd like to think so. I think our fan base is pretty strong, and, and we, we try we work hard at you know doing a good job with that show. The show you just did with Meshach Taylor, uh, who plays uh, yeah, we did an episode with, with my yeah, played the, the guy who played the guy the the, 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 the African American actor and that played the guy. Uh, was hotel room we borrowed, Meshack Taylor, who's been my friend for over 40 years. I, we started together in a business to the play Hair in 1969. Um, he did an episode of Criminal Minds that uh, my assistant co-wrote. It's a brilliant episode because uh, Meshack got to play a guy I was in Vietnam with, supposedly, and now he's homeless on the streets. And it's with a lot of flashbacks in that episode. So anyway, I, it's, I, I'm enjoying what I'm doing now. And, and uh, you know, I'll, hopefully I'll be like George Burns. I'll you know I'll slip in the shower when I'm 100. And see you later. And one last question. Well, way in the back, all the way back. Couldn't let Joe go without asking about the cup games that you usually go to. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you this past summer uh, leading the, the crew in the seventh inning. It was a lot of fun. I, I love the Chicago Channel uh, because it's day baseball. Yeah. Yeah, well, God bless you for being a Cub fan because, uh, <laughs> as you know, it's a curse we all carry. <laughs> and all I can hope is that this century will be a lot better to us than the last century was. Um, yeah, um, you know, we, we, we own a restaurant, actually, in Burbank called Taste Chicago. You know, I'll be at the Bear Game there tomorrow in the morning watching that. And, uh, uh, yeah, once from Chicago, always from Chicago, I guess that's it. We, we yeah, anyway. It's pretty planish. Well, I want to thank
thank you so much, both of you, for being here tonight and celebrating this movie with us. I know, I can't believe it's 25 years. That's what, that's what flipped me out. I said, when I saw the credit, I was like, wow. Give it up for Joe Montaigne and Ricky Gray. Thank you. Thank you very much.